Hey everyone, Zach with Engadget here and we are joined with George of Texas Instruments. We first got our uh, peak of OMAP 5 at CES, but George is going to explain a bit more about the technologies today and do a bit more bragging with some demos than just what OMAP 5 is capable of. So George, would you take it away for us? Welcome to the Texas Instruments booth in Barcelona, Spain, home of Mobile World Congress. We're going to talk you through our latest and greatest Texas Instruments processor, the OMAP 5. We just made silicon late last year, so these processors are very new. We're running them now at about 800 megahertz, but you can expect more than that in the future. I'm going to be showing you a little bit about what's in the OMAP 5 and then a lot about what it does for you. OMAP 5 is a dual core ARM A15. That's our main processing unit. Behind that, we have a number of different processors to help out. We've got two ARM M4s to do a lot of the low power processing to offload the A15. 15s, let them sleep a little bit more, get lower power, and then we have a number of accelerators behind that. We have two Imagination SGX544 graphics cores that do all of the heavy lifting on 3D, some of the composition. If you're familiar with things like Google Android, they really like to use the 3D graphics engine to do a lot with their user interface. Those Imagination 544s are where we do that work. Also, we have our own IVA HD, which is a video accelerator. It does encode and decode. We can actually do 1080p at 60 frames per second, both encoding and decoding on OMAP 5. We have our own video, or excuse me, image processor that does all the JPEG conversions. We also have a camera processing pipe which lets us do calculating photography, but you do things like be able to do filtering and real-time f-stop changes all while you're taking the pictures. The device supports a 14 megapixel camera and we can do 10 shots per second with that 14 megapixel. That gives you some very good options in how to make photography on a device like a cell phone, a tablet, and small units. The OMAP is aimed at everything from a cell phone to automobiles to tablets to even commercial products. You've probably seen some of them out there with OMAP in it. This device is going to be our next generation. We expect to see units shipping with this device probably late this year. So let me start showing you some of what this beast can do for you. You bet. Here's a pretty good overview of some of the capabilities of the device. This is a UI that's been done by a partner of ours. You can see the 3D graphics engine is doing its piece. We've got some other imaging being done. Here we've got decoded JPEG pictures. Our uh, image decoder is doing the decoding while those SGX 544 graphics engines are doing all of the graphics manipulation. We also have on top of that our composition engine which lets us put together the whole frame, lets us do things like all the Google layers that they're used to with the menus, all of that's done in this composition engine, which not only offloads our graphics processor somewhat, it also does it at much lower power. So we can do some of that composition in a very low power state. And now, George, I understand you have an HTML5 demo for us as well, so, so let's take a look at that. Here's our latest processor supporting a HTML5-generated cube, and we're texture mapping engine it, it, it different items onto that cube. You can actually see one cube's not enough anymore. We have to have a cube in a cube. It's too easy to do one cube. You can see each of these screens, like, for example, here's a 720p video that we can zoom in and see on that cube. I told you before that we can do up to 1080. That would happen to be a 720. You can see items done by the Neon processor that's part of the ARM license we receive. You can see things that are done by the graphics core. Again, those Imagination 544s, our video accelerators. All of these items being texture mapped onto these cubes gives you some idea about the power of being able to do this in a UI like you'd use on a modern device. A modern Android, a modern QNX, all of these kind of operating systems can leverage all of this work that we do on the process processor without the software having to be cognizant of all these different pieces. Thank goodness the people at Google, the people at RIM have made their OSs to where there are hardware abstraction layers. The people who write the, the application software doesn't have to know all of these different cores we're bringing to bear. All they have to know is they want to get 
graphics on the screen, they want to get animation on the screen, we take care of everything else behind that. We use all of these different cores to do what they're best at as fast as they can possibly do it so that we can get into a low power mode so that those devices you're going to be carrying in the future can last you for days and days and still have all of this processing power. And all of this is buttery smooth, running at 800 megahertz. That's correct. We expect a lot more when we get this chip to run where we're really going to be building it in the, in the devices that you'll be buying at home. Here's another good application showing you sort of the things we can do from an imaging point of view. You can see these very high resolution images taken, super ability to zoom, nice smooth zooming. All of these functions will be reflected in the UI you use, the applications you use on these modern devices. Think about this on your tablet. Isn't that going to look nice? I would think so. I'll tell you, we're really excited about the performance we're getting. We're excited about the, the aspects of how the chip has woken up without any issues. We're looking really forward to a great 2012 and 13. All right, George, OMAP 5 is looking really nice. I thank you for showing this to us today. Thank you so much for visiting with us here in Barcelona. All right, cheers, everyone. Adios.